yeah, uh, th things uh, things change, and um, let's just you know understand that uh, uh, an era is over. So we had this uh, pre Airbnb era. Airbnb came in, everything changed, and now we are going through another uh, big change like this. You can call it paradigm shift, as uh, we were discussing with Richard and, and Hitak is. Um, it is really going to change. I can't really say how and exactly it's going to play out, but at least we should understand that things are going to change radically as much as the change uh, between the pre-Airbnb area and the post-Airbnb area. Um, then funding, funding. I said hotels, uh, just, you know, if you have to write down in history what's happening, it's like hotels are getting in. And, or we could say a big funding, big, big VCs are getting in. And uh, the most striking for me was, uh, was the, the investment done um, on Beyond Pricing, this uh, company uh, from California. I met, I met James in, in Barcelona, and I think they had at the, at the moment like a few millions in funding, and now they got 40 millions. This is a huge amount of money. They do um, dynamic pricing. So it's like 10 times more uh, what the average startup tends to raise. And uh, yeah, again, this is going to change everything. Also, a lot of price management or dynamic pricing or whatever you want to call it, companies. It's like this is the hot subject this year, it seems. It's a perfect funding uh, target because there's no, it's just a software. So if it, if it really picks up, you just have... Some people write software and, and, and companies paying uh, monthly, which is the, the wet dream of VCs, is a uh, recurring revenue. So I understand why, why all this money is being, you know, all these companies are trying to, to get this right. Um, dynamic pricing is, is really hard, of course, but uh, it, it is needed and, and it exists in hotels. So it's going to exist in vacation rental, going to be uh, a, a basic part of vacation rental stock. Um, Two, um, uh, alternative OTAs. Before before the Vacation Rental War Summit, we there was a, an idea from uh, Deborah from Have You Got Network uh, to have a little meeting, uh, a roundtable with companies who are trying to create alternative OTAs, as Trips is doing and as she is doing. And the idea was to you know sit sit down and, and discuss. And so we did. So she asked Antonio if he was fine with that. He said okay. He even uh, kindly put this uh, our link in um, in the in the mailing list. So there were about twenty people. Um, Simone from Como, which is like the the secret person be behind the Como <laughs> vacation rental or summit, is the guy who knows everybody and is very friendly and, and helpful from um, uh, the company's old old rent Como. And uh, he found us a place in the Chamber of Commerce, something like that. It's come of commercial is a bit different but it's, it's the chambers of commerce uh, uh, room and we had a nice talk with other people and other companies i can't recall all of them um but i'm gonna put the links in the in the video so there were uh, several um so we presented trips we presented uh, the have you got network um i can't remember now sorry the, the names there was also a guy who's doing a book in a rec conference in, I think, Edinburgh. Damien, I think. Uh, I'm sorry, I should have prepared with the names and the links, but I put them down below. So there is something moving with alternative OTAs. And I've heard, and I actually I missed Vanessa's speech, Vanessa from Mental United. She was talking about this, about niche websites. So uh, something is happening also at that level. Um, and uh, yeah, the, anything which breaks the oligo oligopoly of OTAs is, is welcome. And uh, I'm sure we need, uh, as everybody else, to try and you know, do a trial and error process and, and find something which works uh, in the alternative OTAs space. Um, I've heard the Airbnb presentation was pretty lame. Uh, I wasn't there, but I got feedback, so I don't even have to uh, excuse myself because I haven't seen it, so I'm not judging. 
but I heard it was pretty lame and that's in line with what many people are saying and I tend to agree that Airbnb kind of lost it. Um, they don't know anymore what they, they, they stand for. Uh, they had a very strong and unique identity and they blew it. Uh, and they blew it in the name of growth. And that's what you need to get when you get a lot of uh, VC funding. You need to grow so that your valuation grows and then well, you do your IPO. So uh, Airbnb um, is doing IPO probably next year. Um, let's see, let's see. But yeah, the feeling is that Airbnb lost it and Booking.com found it. Booking.com uh, didn't go through this um, marketing uh, community kind of narrative. Uh, they are a company, they send you bookings, they make a lot of money out of this. And they, they've been pretty clear since the beginning, since before even getting into this market. And, uh, and they're doing, now they're doing vacation rentals and they're doing very well and increasingly better. That's it. It's, it's a more like a clearer proposition. Um, so that, that's my take basically. Airbnb lost its way, Booking.com improved the execution and they are winning uh, in my opinion. Google, yeah, Google, um, okay. There was this guy, um, Nicola Simonato, whom I found, I, I later met, actually he, he comes from 20 kilometers from where I come from in the province of Venice, and <laughs> we have a few, a few things in common. Um, interesting, interesting uh, presentation, the one of Google. Uh, what most people do not know, I mean, at least technical people know it, but most people do not know. And, and a guy uh, presenting the next day actually mentioned this is what the Google graveyard is, which is all these projects which Google launches and then they fail, which is fine. But uh, the, the perception uh, of the layman is that Google is uh, invincible or whatever to do works. No, Google mostly fails in what they do in, in creating new businesses. Uh, most people just know about Google Plus, but that's just the biggest example. But there's a whole list of um, um, projects which were either failed or the worst, they, they were actually successful, but maybe they were not in line with what Google wanted and they shut them down and they let a lot of people angry. Uh, if you are in the technical space, like if you read Hacker News, that's the Y Combinator forum, why Combinator are the guys who invested in Airbnb at the beginning, just to send them the best uh, incubator in the world, basically. Uh, if you hang out in that forum, uh, most people are really pissed off with Google. They won't touch any new Google product anymore. Nobody will build a company on that because they. you can take for granted now that in a few years it's going to be shut down, um, sunsetting products. And... Yeah, so uh, a word of advice, Google is interesting. Google is coming to kind of maybe breaking this oligopoly. Um, many people hope that Google kind of helps the industry. Um, all right, fine, perfect. Let's look at it. Let's try. Do not take too many risks with Google. Uh, you may find yourself two years from now or five years from now having invested a lot of money and time in Google. And then you get this message, uh, we are sunsetting, Google Vacation Rentals, six months from now, ex export your data, bye-bye. Um, that could happen. Uh, to be fair, uh, Nicola said that Google um, does this when they are realized they cannot be the best. So they can, there could be somebody else who could do this better. That doesn't change much the fact that it is, I would say, risky to... Uh, uh, count too much on what Google is doing, at least until when what they're doing is clearly there to stay. And that's counted, I think, in years. So don't get too excited. Um, let's keep a look. Let's, let, let's invest as much as we can and knowing that we, we, we could lose it. Okay, it's, it's a great opportunity, of course. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to say this because I talk to people and very few in our industry are aware of this fact. So Google Graveyard and welcome Google to the space. Um, we hope you can make it better and you can be successful. Okay, this year, no blockchain talk at all. 
and this is uh, in line with uh, what the world does to referring to the blockchain. It is very Bitcoin price dependent. That's what, let me say what I mean. So when Bitcoin price goes up, everything gets excited about whatever in the crypto space. Um, and everybody wants to talk about it and that's nobody understands it, of course, but it doesn't matter. There is um, a lot of curiosity. And in Florence two years ago, I remember Vanessa and Richard Volton talking about blockchain. That was September 2017. Bitcoin was going to the moon until you know it, it, it hit about twenty thousand uh, dollars at the end of December and that was September so it was like it was running up and every week you will see Bitcoin gaining a thousand dollars more so everybody was excited so we had this uh, bit the blockchain talk a lot we were there were mentions of companies like winding tree uh, which is still there and we're gonna bring them to Milan actually to Hikon in December conference about blockchain and about uh, travel and we do blockchain in travel there, we co-organize it. And um, and yeah, and then, you know, there was the, the, the bubble uh, crashed, <clears throat> popped, and uh, there was still interest. And uh, like last year, so last year, Antonio kindly invited us to, to present trips in, um, in Como. But for two years now, the price of Bitcoin is, is being pretty stable, uh, relatively speaking. This year it went from, 3,500 to 13,000 and then it dropped down back to I think now eight or 9,000. So uh, the, what I want to convey, the price of Bitcoin doesn't matter in terms of what's happening behind the scenes. Actually, um, when there's uh, the money, the, the price is stable, there's a lot of work being done. And in these last two years, there's been a lot of work um, behind the scenes again, because people are not looking at it. There's already the origin protocol beta, which is really nice. It's a beta, there's still bugs and everything, but a lot of work is going on. And uh, so in this period, there's not a lot of interest from the layman on the blockchain, but that's fine. That's fine. It's gonna, um, it's either gonna come back when it's ready or when the price of Bitcoin goes up. And I, I really hope it, it just goes and comes back when it's ready so we can show something uh, really, really effective. Um, yeah, I met the guys of Host, the, this conference at the end of October in London, which again, uh, it's really uh, kind of a professional corporation uh, which does conferences and they decided to do a package rental conference because they saw this market is growing. So we're going to present trips there. And, uh, and then we'll see how it goes. So, um, Antonio also announced the next year conference in, um, I think, Annecy, that's the name, in France, in some kind of class. I don't know how he finds these places. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's been going around so long. And of course, he, wanna, he wants to make it better. Um, be there, be there, just be there. It's just great. And then, oh yeah, Matt Lando. Matt Lando was there too. Um, Matt Lando was launched uh, a very well done um, series on TV uh, is also available on YouTube uh, in cooperation with Booking.com. Uh, I even also uh, I, I look at the first uh, episode in Bali, makes me cry because I used to live in Bali and haven't been there for a while. And uh, yeah, so yeah, it's getting it's getting bigger, guys. Uh, I, I would have a lot to say, but uh, yeah, I think that's enough. So. Congratulations to Antonio once again and um, see you around and uh, see you next year in, in France, I guess.